the headwind and crosswind component graph, or the wind component graph, or the graph that just kind of looks like a spider web in a corner. At least it looks like that to me. This graph is often applied to takeoff and landing situations. This particular one is featured in the private pilot written test. And when learning how to use this thing, the good news is that it kind of already comes with instructions. We could go along with this given example illustrated right on the figure itself. Let's say we were using a south facing runway, runway 18, and the wind was reported as 210 at 40 knots. The difference between 210 wind direction and the runway direction would be 30 degrees. With that information, we can locate our spot on the chart right up here in this area where all these lines are labeled incrementally up to 90 degrees. These lines are all related to wind direction relative to a runway or the aircraft's intended path. Here is our 30 degree line, which we will keep track of. Next, we will look at these curved lines, which are all related to wind speed or velocity. They increase from zero up to about 60 knots. We are dealing with a 40 knot wind velocity in this example. And we can see this particular curved line crosses at a point with our previously selected 30 degree line. And from this point, we can read our results for both the headwind and crosswind component. To get the headwind component reading from this point, draw a straight line horizontally across to the left. This will lead us to get a headwind component of 35 knots. To get the crosswind component reading, draw vertically downwards from this point. It looks like it gives us 20 knots there. That's it. That's really all there is to this graph. And this example is literally drawn on the chart figure for the testing supplements. So that means it will be available to refer back to if you need during your written test. So don't get this one wrong. If you still want more examples to practice, well, that's why this video didn't end here. Here is a sample question asking for the headwind component when landing on runway 18 if the tower reports the wind as 220 degrees and 30 knots. With that, we will subtract 180 from 220 to get the angle difference between the wind direction and runway. This leaves us with 40 degrees. We will go up to the top area of the chart pick out the 40 degree line here, and then we will go over to these curved lines and pick out the 30 line. And we will look to see where this will create a point with our 40 degree line. From that point, we will draw straight across to the left and see what our reading for the headwind component would be. Here, it looks like we are definitely above 20, but below the midway point between 20 and 30 placing us somewhere below 25. So within our given answer options for this question, option B would be our best answer. Stay careful with questions like these during your written test, because with a single word change in the question, the correct answer becomes totally different. As with this case, we could exchange headwind with crosswind. And with that small change, we would need to look over to the bottom of the chart. The given illustrated example happens to get in the view of this particular area, but we could still make out that our line would fall somewhere on the left side of that 20 mark. So that means we would be at a number less than 20. In our given answer options here, answer A would be correct in this case. I remember always thinking, What's the purpose of this information? What is a headwind and crosswind component anyway? To put it simply, remember that airplanes perform best when taking off and landing facing into the wind. A direct headwind is often ideal, with the nature of wind being that it tends to change in direction and velocity this chart can help us see how a particular wind situation is having us counteract a crosswind from pushing us to either side of a runway, and how much of a direct headwind is lost 
due to wind not aligning with the runway. We can see how this is reflected on this graph. If we had a zero degree angular difference between the wind and runway directions, as in the wind is blowing right down along the runway, we don't have to fight any crosswind in this case. The wind would be purely 100% a headwind, all of its velocity dedicated to helping the aircraft produce lift during takeoff and slowing down upon landing. And we can see here how no matter how strong the wind is blowing in its velocity, the crosswind component remains at zero. And if we look over to the other corner of the chart here, we have a 90 degree angular difference between the wind and runway directions. That gives us what they call a direct crosswind. In these cases, the headwind component would be zero on this chart. All of that wind is dedicated to pushing the airplane to either side of the runway. When we have something somewhere in the middle between zero and 90 degree angular difference, we get a little bit of both a headwind and crosswind influencing the airplane performance. As you can see, around the 45 degree mark, we can see how the wind is split evenly between its headwind and crosswind effects. Both components match in their intensities. So just because the wind happens to not align perfectly with the runway, it doesn't necessarily mean that all of that wind is a crosswind. And this is how you can calculate how much of a crosswind may be present during a given day. Say, for example, a student pilot may have a specific crosswind limitation on a solo endorsement. Or someone may be considering the listed maximum demonstrated crosswind on an unfamiliar aircraft. How about if we had to approach this chart in a different order? Such as, if we are asked to determine the maximum wind velocity for a 45 degree crosswind if the maximum crosswind component for the airplane is 25 knots. So what that means is that we need to kind of reverse or change our starting point on this chart compared to what we had just practiced in our earlier questions. So our airplane is limited with a crosswind component maxed out at 25 knots. Any more knots than that, the airplane will be overwhelmed and its flight controls can no longer keep it flying straight ahead onto the runway anymore. With that, we can start on the chart right where that limitation would be, right here, the spot for 25 knots crosswind component. And next, we would look for the 45 degree crosswind angle that given wind is coming from. So we are going to track up from our 25 knot crosswind limit and come together to form a point with a 45 degree line. Now what happens next? Since the question has asked about wind velocity, we need to refer to these curved lines. From this point, we are going to visualize drawing a curved line to match this pattern on the chart. By doing that, we will arrive at a wind velocity somewhere between 30 and 40 knots. It looks to me almost exactly in the middle. So by looking over at our answer options, answer C looks like an easy pick. Remember that in paying attention to simple yet important details, you keep yourself from making silly mistakes, such as here, if we didn't draw out the curved line and instead made the quick mistake of drawing straight across, it would tempt us to make the wrong selection of answer A, 25 knots, which doesn't even fit the context here. But be careful about how sometimes we can get so familiar with a routine that the habits can be tempting to continue even when they don't work with different situations and questions. And this is an example of how the answer options also sometimes include tempting, incorrect answers. They're a trap. Don't let habits mislead to wrong selections. Last question, just one more. How about with a reported wind of north at 20 knots, which runway, 6, 
29 or 32 is acceptable for use for an airplane with a 13 knot maximum crosswind component. Here is how we will do this. We know that the aircraft has a crosswind limit of 13 knots, so we can start there. Each of these thin blue lines represent an increment of 1 knot, so I counted this spot to be the 13 knot line. I will draw it all the way up across the chart. In addition to that, we were also provided that the wind velocity is 20 knots. We will seek the curved arc line of 20 knots, and that will cross our vertical line of 13 knots. So, what are we supposed to do with all these runways? And how do we pick the correct one? As we have been doing before, we need to take these given runways and find the angle of difference between that particular runway and the direction this wind is coming from. In this case, north. One of these angles should bring a match to this particular point we had just made. So we have the wind coming from the north, which we know is 0 degrees, or also 360 degrees. They are the same thing. So let's take the first option, runway 6. Let's see what's going on with that one. Now, since north is the only point on the entire azimuth that has two numbers to represent it, we can choose between 360 and 0 degrees. To make your life simpler, we can choose the number that is closer to whatever direction we are comparing to. Such as with the case of runway 6, or 60 degrees, that would be closer to 0 degrees. The gap between the two is 60 degrees, bringing us to this line on the chart. Note the resulting position of the point for this runway. Next, with runway 29, it is facing the direction 290 degrees. And remember, with comparing to what north is, which is both 360 or 0 degrees, to make life easier, just pick the number that's closer to the runway heading you are comparing with. So, 360 is closer to 290, and the difference between those is 70 degrees. When plotting this on the chart, we end up with this line and the point located not too far from the one made with runway 6. And lastly, with runway 32, we subtract 320 from 360. The directional difference is 40 degrees here. Plotting that on the chart, we end up with this position. Now, we can look and compare where each of the runways place us on this chart. With runway 6, we create a point in this position on the chart. Looks like that would be somewhere between 15 and 20 knots crosswind. That would not be good for our answer, because that exceeds our airplane limit of 13 knots crosswind. So this doesn't work out. Next runway, runway 29, that puts us even farther away from 13 knots, even closer to 20 knots on the chart. So that one's not a good one either. At this point, it looks like the airplane is down to this last provided runway. Runway 32 will place us on this spot on the chart, lining up with the limit of the airplane. Thank goodness! So that shows how runway 32 would be the best answer within our given options here. So, on a small final note regarding the wind component charts, it may be worth mentioning that there is also this version out there too. This one is not featured in the written test supplement book, but overall, it is also a quick and easy way to check for your headwinds and crosswinds. Do you have a preference for one over the other? Well, that's all I can think of for this video, so maybe we'll meet again in the next one. Bye for now!